last 12, 15 years, you know, getting involved with college all-star games and the AFL and AF, excuse me, and now the XFL, uh, there's a lot of knowledge that I have. I wanted to give back, you know, so uh, my kids are in college now. I have some more time. I am fully immersed myself in coaching. That is my priority job. Uh, I have visions and expectations. Everything I've done in my life is, uh, is for a bigger purpose. And right now in that league is allowing me to showcase that in a platform and I got to keep winning. Matter of fact, I got to win a championship like now. So uh, I love it, and uh, you know, I'm going to continue to grow there. We'll see where that leads down the road. Was there any point, like, once you got the same job, you were like, whoa, this is not, this, this, there's some, that was, it was something that even as with your experience, you weren't expecting? Yeah, I think every coach goes through that at some point. I mean, uh, I was a first-time head coach. First time for a lot of things, right? So uh, uh, you put a good staff around you, put people that are actually like, smarter than you around you, you, you can make them not trip up on those things as much, right? So proponent of a team getting together of good quality coaches, guys that know how to communicate. I let guys do their job, but ultimately I'm going to make the decisions. Like, I don't call plays. So, for instance, I learned so much from coaches in college and NFL. They teach you what not to do in situations because they mess it up every week. I just I just take a lot of notes. I got a whole note thing on my, uh, on my on my phone, man, that I just write down. And for me, I don't call plays, so I got I to gotta be on that. It's important to me. It means something to me. You know, going forward on fourth down, all this kind of thing. I don't use analytics. I mean, we don't have that much in our league because we have different variety of ways of scoring. Right. But uh, it's a feel thing, man. It's a gut. You know, you believe in what you're doing. You think about those scenarios and situations and you roll with it. But, uh, yeah, I'm always learning as a head coach. Every coach, if you're not after the season evaluating yourself and getting better, you're losing track and space from the guys ahead of you. Look at the college football game right now. Now, if you're not adapting and, and trying to get with what's going on right now, you're going to be left behind the dust and you're going to be overwhelmed with everything. Portal. Players, all this different stuff. So you got to nil. I mean, and you got to be able to manage that stuff. And uh, the more you do that, the better. But you also got to, you know, it's still football. You still got to coach. At some point, when this thing all equals out with the uh, the lawsuit and the money and all that stuff, man, it's going to come down to coaching, right? So you better have the best coaching staff, guys that know how to do it. I have a great coaching staff for me, so that's great for where I'm at in my league. But again, for all those other coaches and where I'm trying to go, like making sure you surround yourself with really good people because ultimately they're going to want they're going to be the ones that you know, get you hired and get you fired. So that, that's kind of how I look at it. Is that Rocco's hat? Yeah, this is RB3, man. Yeah, that's his... So, uh, speaking of NIL, I mean, yeah. that, what is that like for you as a dad when, as a player, none of this was a thing? Yeah, I got no money in West Virginia, so uh, <laughs> I didn't have any money in my pocket until I got to the league, which is a good thing. Um, you know, it's great because, obviously, someone that's played at the highest level was able to make good money, go through some ups and downs, and just know how to do it, right? He's well ahead of it. He's like, you know... He has a hard time, honestly, spending his scholarship check, you know, that he gets. I don't know how kids even spend all that, you know. Invest it, invest it, invest it. And the opportunities do come. I was based on a great job. Other schools, they continue to build that. You know, some are a little old school, but they're working different ways. And uh, But everybody here is doing something. It's just a part of the game. You have to be a part of it. But, you know, being a quarterback, obviously, you get those opportunities. But for a guy like him, he doesn't mean anything. He has no bills. He's all ball right now. So I just, you know, I just help him out. Hey, where's the money? Let's put it in here. We're investing in here. This is it's back like, oh, cool, Dad, we made 20%, 30%. percent that you know, watch it grow. And then 10 years from now, we're going to be able to go. Yeah, that's, um, I did, yeah. So there was a stock, uh, yeah, it was right around the bubble through the internet thing, and I, I had some good advice. And, and we went and we took on all the big East schools across uh, the big East at the time, and hell, we crushed it. I mean, we, most, we made the most money on anybody. I got to go up. Uh, who was sponsoring that? Goldman Sachs or Tucker Anthony? Tucker Anthony, mm -hmm. and I uh, got to go to New York during the big East I got a knowledge for that, so, you know, trying to pass that knowledge on uh, to my kid as well, but uh, he doesn't need any money right now. He's just playing ball. It's football first, and, you know, he doesn't, and he gives back to, you know, he did a great camp in, in Perry, uh, Iowa, came back to a, a struggling community, and that was his deal, man. He just, you know, I'm proud of him, man. He just keeps it, keep ripping it off, and the successes will come. You talk about evolution with that, with NIL. Do you feel that is a good evolution? Do you feel it's an evolution that really is going to take college athletics to a better level? Yeah, I love it. I love it. I really do. Now, it's, it, it gets to be sway because there's there's no control. Some right. people have more, and it's tough to navigate, you know, and kids get enamored that. Families get enamored that, especially for kids that don't have a lot. Like, man, there's a lot of big numbers out there to really look through. So, like, what is the value? What is the worth? You know, who are the people that are around you that can help you in those moments? As long as the schools are helping these kids navigate these things, 
and not lean on an agent or some somebody that's out there. You have to help inform. That's part of the coach's job. It's part of it, a, a school's job to do those things. So the more you can inform them, uh, the more you you know you can help them learn. I mean, I, you know, I got a lot of people at my disposal that can, you know Rocco can talk to Vinny Testaverde, Chad Pennington, mm -hmm. Rich Gannon. I'm gonna throw these people out, you know, because he needs the knowledge. You know, if you can get the knowledge, then you can figure it all out. You got to do it though. At the end of the day, I can give you all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't, if you can't do it and you can't take those steps. It's a waste of time, right? But I'm gonna stick it in your face as much as I can. So, uh, I mean, as long as you know we keep doing that as coaches and and colleges keep doing that kind of stuff, I think you can always take that climb and, and help these kids succeed. A lot of these kids are doing a lot of good things too, but there are some, you know, that just there's a lot at them, man. Like, it's great, but are they, you know, giving the guidance they need? And, but I do, I do like the NIL. I think it's a game changer. It can help a lot of kids in the right way, and you know, schools have to manage and have a plan with that to make it to make it right. You mentioned going get where you want to be. Oh, you want to be in the NFL. You want to go to the uh, NFL. Someday. You know, I, I've had opportunities you know to mean? go to the NFL. I've, I've kind of passed. I think right now for me, college coaching is where I want to be. I want, to be, a, uh, I want to be a head coach in college. So, I'm on you'd be willing to go the assistant route, uh, or do you want to jump? Yeah, into I, you know, I, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I sat in front of the UFL. Rock, Danny Garcia, Redbird Capital. I wasn't on their list, on their radar. It's about vision. It's about having a plan. And it's about following through with that as well. So we've been winning. For me, I'm just trying to win a championship as fast as possible, trying to help guys get back to the NFL. We had 16 two years ago go to training camp. We had eight this year. And uh, you know, we have a great city in St. Louis. I love the job. I'm going to do this for a while. I like what I'm doing. But when those opportunities come and I can get an opportunity to sit in front of somebody, I think that's where the deals get closed. I just got to get in front of them. If I can get in front of them, that's, it. that's, the, that's the difference maker in this process. But assistant coach, yeah, I think there's, there's different things there. You know, can you be a coordinator, O-line coach? Do you go to a big program, you know, be like an assistant head coach, do something on that capacity? Right. Absolutely, that's always on the table. But uh, my goal, obviously, is to, is to be a college head coach. Is there a reason I'm, college, not NFL? Yeah, I think. Uh, obviously, you have a lot of connections you know, to the I, NFL. I do, yeah. You know, the Jets I, just made a change yeah, recently, you know, obviously. I, you know, for Former me, I think it's yours. interesting. You know, I, I know I can do it. I know I can do the NFL thing. I mean, I'm around that so much. Um, it's a little different type of deal there, I think. You know, you talk about ownership and a traditional way of finding coaches. I don't think they'd step out of the box and kind of look at it. Now, could I get an interview and sit in front, could I sit in front of the Jets or could I sit in front of these teams that I have good relationships? Yeah, I know 15, 16 different GMs that I have good relationships with. Say, hey, let's talk. You know, that could be uh, formal, informal, whatever it is. And it's just for me to kind of, you know, gain that experience. But I know I do the NFL. I just think I want to help. I just think these, this is where the passion is. I have a kid that does it. I see what he's doing. I see the kids around him. And I see these other kids across the country. And uh, I can give them the football. That's, that's, that's the deal. But it's the other stuff, man. Like, you know, it's Jedi mind trips. It's mesh messaging. It's being a psychologist. It's helping these guys. That's a big part of this thing as well as your coach. It's not just, hey, I want to go. Okay, I got a coaching job. I want to sit in the offensive meetings, but I, I get pulled out. I got to talk to a player. I got an issue. So all those things, I embrace those things. So, uh, you know, I'm a leader of men. I'm a CEO coach. That's what I do. People say I'm a player's coach, but I hold, I hold guys accountable. I hold my coaching staff accountable. And I think those things work very well. And I'm real. Tell the truth. Guys know where they stand. If you don't like that, then you're probably not the right guy for me. And uh, that's kind of how I kind of stand by my my coaching style right now. You might have been asked this already. What's it mean to be back here and get later tonight? It's fantastic, man. I love uh, I love the state. I love the fan base. Uh, they made me who I am today. You know, I, I always tell people like I'm definitely scared of like the name on the back of my jersey representing my family and this and this community, man. Because uh, you know, it's just. Uh, on the shoulders to just keep it clean because there are a lot of things out there that you can sway people uh, the wrong direction. I always want to you know, feel like I'm not just representing my family, but the people, the states, and the teams that I've ever played with and uh, just kind of you know do the right thing in, in that manner. And I, I've always tried to do that. But uh, it's great to be back. I see family, friends, um, old teammates. It's been really cool. And to do it on a night where my son's playing, uh, in front of the fans tonight, a blackout, the drone show, whatever whatever's going on today. It's fun, man. I'm fired up for it. Um, you know, I think uh, over the years, it was something in my mind that I wanted to do. I just couldn't commit to it fully. I was uh, on uh, the NFLPA Collegiate All-Star Game staffs for about 10 years with Mike Morris and Marvin Lewis. Uh, every time I would go talk to those guys, they're like, get out of the media and start coaching. And I just like, it wasn't the right time for me. So uh, got involved with the AAF. Mike Morris became the head coach. Went to California and San Diego, became his tight end coach. Soaked in everything I could, not just the, you know being a tight end coach, but just being a coach around him. And uh, and I've learned from a lot. I've been on five five different organizations in the NFL, uh, two firings, and two of those organizations. So I've seen it all. Good coaches, bad coaches. You know, you get a lot of information. 
and now I can do it my way in that twist. So, um, yeah, it's always been there. It's just now my daughter's in college, my son's doing his thing. So, you know, it's a phase of my life. I did the media thing. I, you know, the goal for me in the media was to learn the college game. I did it for a decade. I've been in the buildings. I've seen styles and different coaches, the way they do things, the offenses, the defenses. I know the NFL side. That's the easy part. I just had to kind of enhance myself. I did it for a decade. And uh, now I'm still watching. I'm watching film of every team that Iowa State plays, what, what Iowa State's doing. And, uh, again, it's, it's fun, and I love doing it. And, yeah, that's where we are right now. And what that pass going to look like, how many years, one year, two years, three years from now, I don't know. But I love what I'm doing now. I have a great platform. UFL's doing an excellent job. Hopefully it's around for another 10 years. But uh, it's a great schedule for me because I can coach. I can come home. I can see my son play. And I can also do some Jeff things that I've been going for. Hell, they've been paying me since 2000. I've been taking paychecks right now. I'm not going to turn them down. So. Do you find yourself prepping for college football? Yeah, for sure. Every day. I'm always, I'm always prepping. I'm gathering information. You know, I know a lot of people around different schools, places. Um, it's, uh, you know, the other side. You know, how you manage and all this the money and the, and the general managers and how you want to do the recruiting and the portal and how you want to, that tree is going to look like. From the biggest schools to the middle age, uh, middle tier schools, the football side, the coaching side, all that stuff, to me is where I'll, I'll be strong at. Um, you, know, you know, I may sit in front of an AD and they may say, well, who's going to be your OC and DC? And they may be like, well, I don't know that guy. Or, you know, well, you know, if you only know the guys that are out there, you think they're doing a great job, that's great, but you got to get great teachers and you got to know the system. I just think truly for me, players want to play in the NFL. Players want to play in the NFL, they want to learn that system. They want to learn that way. And does that work in college? Absolutely. There's, you see Andy Reid, he's adapted, right? He does a lot of things that look like college, but he's still pro. It's a hybrid West Coast. It just grows and continues to change. You can still use three tight ends. You can still go empty. You can still do all these things. It's about simplifying it. The West Coast is the toughest kind of offense that's out there, right? Burbage wise. John Gruden is still ripping off, you know, set, two sentence plays. Like, you got to shrink it down. And I'm always yelling at my, my coordinator. And they're short now, but keep them small. Keep them small. We're always prepping. It's like, hey, whatever that next job is, you got to make sure a kid can understand, you know, you know 272. Y drive, Z shot, whatever it is, whatever it is, is you got to make it two words. You know, you got to make it simplified. But if they're getting that and they're understanding, we'll teach it like that. But they get it with one word. Now you're learning. Why wouldn't a quarterback want to be with uh, Bruce Gregowski, who played in the league for 12 years behind Ben Roethlisberger, who won games, running at an offense that Andy Reid, Matt Lafleur, um, you know Kevin O'Connell, all these coaches are running successfully. Sean, McKay, okay, that's what we do. You know, so that can work in college. So some teams do it, and um, yeah, you just got to be able to deliver that. So yeah, I'm always prepping. Deliver it. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, and our league is very similar to college. Because the UFO, I'm, I'm recruiting guys every day. I'm calling NFL receivers that have been cut, whatever, like, hey, you need to come and letting them understand why this is the right move to come with us and not wait for a team to bring them for a workout or something like that. Just sign Andy Isabella, a uh, five year NFL guy, second round guy. We're about to sign another NFL receiver that we convinced to come with us. You know, we're going to reload every year. Season or one in nine season, I, you know, people want winners. I got to be consistent. So there's a lot of pressure. I'm heavily involved in that, in the, in the, in the personnel side as well. And that helps me too because I have a good eye for the for the film stuff as well as far as seeing talent. And uh, and I coached at the high school level at the bottom. I mean, I was a coordinator of Rocco's team for a year. I helped them out the year before that. So um, I mean, I've been dealing with youth in my camps for 20 years. So ten year old kid all the way up to 34 year old quarterback AJ McCarron. You know, I've just been there. It's a pretty good. I also cover the NFL, and you obviously you played for the Jets, and so talk to them. Were you at all surprised by Robert Sala being fired and that decision? And any thoughts on the future of that franchise and the situation this year? Yeah, I'm never surprised of, uh, of anything. You know, I mean, uh, Woody Johnson is the owner; he can do whatever the hell he wants, right? I mean, it's his team. I think at the end of the day, there's a high expectation level for that team. They expect to win, and uh, they're not winning at the capacity they once. So, right? a new voice, a new a new leader at the helm. I think Jeff Ulbrich does a great job. The only thing with Jeff Ulbrich now is a head coach who can't be a defensive coordinator, so it's just that transition of handling all the other minutia throughout the day uh, that happens to really, so, you know, for a guy that wants to focus on D 